Our world needs us. It needs all of us to pay attention, to plug in, to commit, to tap into the powerful network of minds, ideas, and possibilities that are gathered right here. Because the stakes are higher than ever. Food insecurity, climate change, access to healthcare. These are the critical issues technology has the power to solve. The kind of tech that is already emerging around us, impacting every industry, every city, and every home. But these aren't just exciting new technologies we're talking about. These are solutions, powerful innovations, and most of all, hope. We're hopeful because the moments we spend right here might be some of the most important moments of the year. This is a chain reaction that begins now and affects everything, from the sustainability of this world to the exploration of others. Yes, the tech we'll see at CES will impress and astound us. It will also motivate us to innovate our way to a healthier, more sustainable world. But this kind of transformation requires our full attention, everything we've got. So be ready, be engaged, be inspired. Be in it. Good evening. On this opening night of CES 2023, please welcome our host, the president and CEO of the Consumer Technology Association, Gary Shapiro. Welcome to CES 2023. New automotive technology has generated excitement and moved markets at CES for many years. But this year, thanks to BMW and Chairman of the Board of Management, Oliver Tsipsi, we are taking another step forward. BMW has been at the forefront of a push for electric mobility, which is the key to lowering our environmental impact and embracing more sustainable living. In fact, by the year 2030, at least half of the BMW Group's vehicle deliveries worldwide are set to be fully electric models. Now, BMW's work is also helping us reimagine what's possible, merging the real and virtual worlds using digital twin and VR technology to plan and develop the driving machines of the future. This forward-leaning approach to innovation is a testament to the leadership of Oliver Zipsa, who has spent his entire professional life at BMW AG. Serving in multiple positions since joining BMW as a trainee in 1991, he has emerged as a decisive, strategic, and analytical leader, and an advocate for pioneering new technologies within the BMW group. Thanks to his work, BMW is shaping the vision of a digital tomorrow. And now, the BMW keynote. Thank you, Gary. We have a great show for you tonight. The show is about to start in a few seconds. 30. 25. 20. 15. Fans and dear guests, it's great to have you here with us today. It's great to have you here with us. Innovators, digital natives, BMW fans, it's great, it's great. Okay, um, ich fange jetzt nochmal an. Innovators, digital natives, BMW fans, and dear guests, it's great. Oliver, today is my first big public appearance. I'm kind of nervous. Will people like me? Yeah, okay. 
Oh, you know me. I I've never been in front of such a big crowd before. Don't worry, we're doing that together. I will start and then we will delight everyone with a big bang. Deal? <laughs> Deal. Let's blow them away. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The BMW Group exists to move body, heart, and mind. This is our inner compass. Right now, we're on the road to the Neue Klasse, a holistic approach to a next generation of cars, a road to be tackled with profound transformation. Transformation primarily driven by circularity, electrification, and digitalization. BMW iVision Circular has already shown what circularity could look like. Today, we present what digitalization means for the BMW Group and our products. For us at the BMW Group, Digitalization has always been a key element of all our products. It's deeply rooted in our heritage, as we started the digital revolution with our connected drive. Now, we will push the boundaries again. By connecting people, not only between cities, but between different worlds, we will use digitalization to make mobility easier more sustainable, and more human. There has always been a deep relationship between people and their BMWs. We will lift this relationship to a completely new level. With us, your BMW becomes a real companion. Honored guests, please welcome live on stage the BMW Group CEO, appearing tonight in the real as well as in the virtual world, Oliver Zipsa. Innovators, influencers, BMW fans, dear guests, it's great to have you here with us. It's great to be in this vibrant city and at CES again. You don't come here without bringing a real sensation with you. And today, we've brought our ace. In just a few moments, you will meet the perfect digital car of the future. Our vision of a true digital, emotional experience in mobility, or as we like to call her, D. Not virtually, not just on paper, no, here, for real, live, and on stage. The future of mobility is, as you know, electric, circular, and digital, that much is clear. But what exactly do these three characteristics mean for the car of the future? Well, we are drawing a picture of it, piece by piece. The first part is electric. More and more customers worldwide are enjoying that amazing electrifying feeling every day. Electromobility unleashed within the ultimate driving machine. What a perfect combination, we think. The second part is the BMW iVision Circular. Our vision of 100% circularity. 
That means all raw materials a car is made of can and will be used again. That's the future of sustainable premium mobility. And that is what we are working on. And now today, we're adding the final piece of the puzzle, digital. And this may be the most dynamic piece of all. This is where we really get to see who can rethink the car from the wheels up, which is exactly what we are doing with the development of our next all-new BMW model generation. And we call it our Neue Klasse. It's all about embracing the future while honoring the past. But before we get started, let me clear up a few cliches. Digital leadership in the car is not about who has the biggest screen, the highest processing power, or who writes the most lines of code. No. The only thing that really counts is what the user feels and experiences. What you feel and experience when the car welcomes you. And I do not just mean with your name on the display. No. I mean when you see how your car literally gets excited to hit the road with you. When you cannot tell the difference anymore between what's real and what's virtual when you are driving. Because we tore down the boundaries. When your car transforms from a helpful assistant into a faithful companion, because it gets to know you better day after day. Sounds like mobility is becoming more human, right? Take a deep breath. This is a story about the future, about love and friendship, and about a brand new BMW, of course. Wait a minute, not this one. No, we need an electric vehicle with Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. No, guys, not this, not a golf cart, come on. Okay, Arnie, the car chase is next. Uh, put this on and we'll meet in the virtual studio. I don't know about this. I can't put this on. Why don't we do it the old-fashioned way? Yeah, but... Like, in reality. This is how movies are made today. Don't fear the future, yeah? I love my Zeus outfit. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Welcome, Arnie. Welcome to the future. Just put your old stuff on the table and make yourself at home. Who are you? Are you a god or something? God, no. And you? Not at all. Oh, bummer. No. So, why are you here? Is it for the money? Money? <laughs> no. They love me to do these commercials. You know, because I'm old enough to know about the good old days, and I know about cars and love, cars and friendship. You sure it isn't because you were a big movie star in the 80s? I don't even know why I'm talking to you. I mean, seriously. How did people back then survive without the internet? Or unbelievably stunning virtual worlds? Let me convince you. There's something very special about the good old days. Everything seemed to be more real. Imagine a story with real machines, beautiful landscapes, lots of action everywhere you look. Ah, oh, and true love. <laughs> I mean, can't you see how happy we were? What a time it was. Uh, all I can see is smoke coming out of an old BMW. Who cares? Cars were very special then. Ah, we heard audio tapes. <laughs> Cars completed us and brought us together. Together, we discovered new places, magical places. And I can tell you, you always will remember that first kiss. Mm. Oh, come on, Arnie, that is just sentimental bullshit, pardon my French, but our world is way more complicated now. Your story isn't complex enough. 
You want complexity? I will give you complexity. I mean, you know, our cars had heart and soul. Our lives had ups and downs, yes, but it was all about real emotions, real passion. Hey! Don't you understand that? What are you doing? Emotions make everything more complicated. Personally, I think in the future, technology will help solve problems like these. Bullshit. And seriously, could that BMW even talk? What about all the cool technical stuff? Now you're really pissing me off. I mean, for us, technology was totally emotional back then. Our cars protected us. To us, they were pure freedom. They belonged to us. And we didn't need heated seats. No, we could heat ourselves. We lived it to the fullest. Wait, she kisses another guy and now he's sad? These kids are always in the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, it's not just about getting to the right place, but also what you learn on the way. As long as they learn something. Arnie, what's with the suit? Are you becoming digital now? What? Imagine a perfect ending. She returns to that magical place where she had her first kiss, and she hopes that the love of her life will be there too. Arnie, stop it with the epic 80s storytelling. Try to be a little more innovative. I got it. You want a copy of my audio cassette? <laughs> what? Where did that come from? Okay, okay. You're right. But we are talking cars. Okay, show me. I will. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Seriously? I've been looking for... Stop it. This is getting us nowhere. But the car could talk. Yes, I can talk. <laughs> I know. You want a picture of me, huh? Michael, please. Guys. Yeah, guys. I drove all the way to that beautiful place just to hear them arguing. I mean, what is wrong with those guys? I mean, of course, I wanted a picture, but that's not the question we're here for tonight, is it? The question is, where will the journey go? Can technology like cars provide companionship, like a real companion? People love cars since, well, since always. Cars are safe havens, individuality, they're an expression of personality. For some, they're a status symbol. For many, their first car is the first step into adulthood. Cars take you to school and then to work, and some people are even born in cars. Okay, mainly in movies, but it does happen. The point is, cars already are our companions, but they are also technology, and our expectations of technology have changed. Everything has to be smart. Did you know there are even smart kettles? I mean, how smart can boiling water be? People did it like 300,000 years ago. A car, on the other hand, well, that should be smart, because our, our car is full of memories. They're in the bodywork, in, in the smell of the seats, in the feel of the steering wheel. And in the future, they'll also be in the digital memory of our car. A memory that really makes my BMW my BMW. And not only in the real world, but also in the virtual world. A BMW that remembers with me, helps me organize my life like an assistant or a companion, a friend. But you do not have to believe me. No, I am definitely not an expert, no. I am just a fan that did ask for a selfie with David Hasselhoff at the earliest opportunity. Yeah. Alice, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but can I come out now? I'm a bit nervous, because I have to present something really groundbreaking right away. Yes, yeah, we're nearly there. Um, I was just talking about sharing some experts' points of view on the future of artificial intelligence. I can help with that. I did a little research. Oh, great. Let's hear it. I'm excited. So first of all, to start with the good news, artificial intelligence will support people, not replace them. And I think this is the most important thing if we talk about our digital future. Tis, you're totally right. There's also another opinion on this. If we have that collective scientific curiosity, 
on pushing to create machines that mimic that kind of mental image of human intelligence, while at the same time understanding humans. We can make humanity better in so many ways. Wow, you really did some great research. So, what do you think? Are you ready to come out and maybe meet some people here? Yes, indeed. But I have one more citation from a woman, a real specialist when it comes to artificial intelligence and future technology. The unknown future rolls toward us. I face it for the first time with a sense of hope. Because if a machine, a Terminator, can learn the value of human life, maybe we can too. Wow. I mean, the Terminator reference isn't quite my generation, but yeah, I definitely did still feel that. But now I think it's time to introduce the vision of BMW Group's digital future, D! Ready? So, let's imagine that there is someone who is always by your side. Imagine a digital soul that is your portal to the virtual world. A partner who makes everyday things easier for you. Imagine the ultimate companion. Imagine that driving becomes a whole new experience. You can decide which reality fits best for you. If it's the real reality or the virtual reality or just some digital enhancements. Imagine that you are starting on your journey into tomorrow, today, together with me, Dee. I am more than a car. I am your ultimate companion. This is how we reimagine tomorrow. Well, dear friends, meet Dee. But please don't call her just a car. You will hurt her feelings. She likes to think herself as a promise, a commitment, or even better, a companion. Basically, she says she's the best thing since the wheel was invented. Well, she definitely doesn't lack self-confidence, right, Dee? You bet, Oliver. Dee? Dee stands for digital emotional experience. It is our vision of pushing the boundaries between physical and digital perception. Dee embodies the next level of human-machine interaction a concept that cannot be simply dismissed as science fiction because it will inspire our neue Klasse. And what is really important to me is, Dear reminds us that you always have to consider both the product and the digital aspect together as a whole. And I strongly believe that you cannot separate software from hardware development. Otherwise, you won't create a seamless digital experience. It's the all-around impression for our users that counts. And that is why BMW doesn't have one team developing the car and another developing the software. We, de we develop digitalized vehicles from the very first spark of an idea all the way to the final product together. I spoke before about cliches. Here's another one. 
you don't understand digital unless you write all the software yourself. Not true. What you need to know is how to bring different software components together quickly and integrate them perfectly into a vehicle. But here too, the competition is not about who can pack in the most features. Because, believe me, not everything that sounds cool makes sense in a car. We go all in, where we see added value for our customers. This is how completely new and surprising functions are created. Need an example? Take our head-up display, the perfect blend of the real and virtual worlds. And remember, 20 years ago, we brought this technology from airplanes into the car. Hands on the wheel, eyes on the road, data right where you need it. And look at what D has made out of this today by merging it with augmented reality functions. And trust me, we can get even more creative with windshields. A newly designed advanced head-up display is just the beginning of what we believe is possible. And it is more than a vision. And I won't tell you all the details today, but we will bring this technology into our Neue Klasse. And not in the far future, not as a concept, but in serious production. And you will be able to experience this in 2025. And remember now, this is just two years away. And now, Dee, the stage is yours. Thank you, Oliver. It's all so exciting. <clears throat> and this really is just the beginning. They have all kinds of splendid things going on with the heads-up display. And for me at BMW. And now, some of them will be explained by my friend Alice. And joining her is a very special guest on Four Wheels. It's Kit. Well, here we are on stage with the two most human cars in history. What a time to be alive. Wait, what about Herbie? Oh, I heard Herbie couldn't make it. Seems to me like he just couldn't make it until there was a great big entrance. <laughs> he asks if you're jealous. Of course he does. I don't want to be impolite, but can we please go on? Michael can call me any minute. He's always in trouble. Okay, let me rephrase that. Here we are on stage with the three most human cars in history. Better? Little more human than I remember. Um, but anyway, today we want to talk about D. Oh boy. <laughs> you like that, right? Oh, it's okay. Be proud. You are a remarkable piece of technology. There is no need for modesty. So, D, how do you feel today? Well, it's my first time on a stage this big in front of so many people, but I am finally starting to feel a little comfortable. Well, that's great, Dee. Show me a smart kettle that feels comfortable. You can't. But Dee can feel comfortable because Dee has a digital soul, a personality, and not only with a voice, but with facial expressions too. She can be sad, angry, happy, Disappointed because she just got an ugly steering wheel cover for Christmas and not those really hot alloy rims that she really wanted. <laughs> Come on, fancy rims. I'm sure an ultimate companion like Dee can do better. 
of course, because D provides immersive experiences, augmented reality, information, entertainment, as easy as being disappointed by a Tinder match. Yeah, by simply swiping her mixed reality slider. Now, level one, that brings you all supportive drive and navigation data that you need, and it even shows you information about your surroundings in a pretty nice looking way. D, can you tell me something about this place? Best thing about this place is there's a casino right around the corner. D, come on, be nice. All right, I'm just kidding. I don't gamble. It would be a little unfair, don't you think? I mean, I can calculate the odds of winning to the hundredth decimal place. Yes, okay, but I think the people here are probably more interested in what happens on level two of the mixed reality slider. Oh, level two. Level two connects you to your friends and family. You can stay in touch wherever you are, including messages from our friends at BMW, answering phone calls, showing texts, all the communication you need. Speaking of which, there's a Mr. Schwarzenegger who sent you a message. It says, good luck with the show tonight. Should I call him? Oh, let me call him. I think I uh, call him. No, 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 don't show his number. I, uh, oh boy, well, D, we're kind of in the middle of something here. So can you remind me about that later, please? Okay. Great, okay. Moving on to level three. Now level three is pretty cool because it brings all the features of the other levels and augments navigation data to your windshield. Collision warnings or possible obstacles highlighted right where you need it. And it also visualizes your social media. But D, what happens when we go all the way to level four? Oh, nothing really special. Just about everything. We go way beyond reality the entire virtual world right at your fingertips. Everything you can imagine, right here, right now. Alice, tell me, yeah. how many of your friends can fit in your car? I don't know, three or four maybe? Guess what? That answer is wrong. The answer is all of them. All your friends and so much more. Your friends, your family, even your pets without one single animal hair on the seats, which I absolutely love, in an endless virtual world. You can meet, play, talk, love, hate. You can even go sightseeing together right inside your car. You wouldn't believe what fits in your car in the future. It's like being in your own personal drive-in cinema, but the movie is your life. Wow, and who doesn't want to be the star of their own movie? Well, as long as you don't play Zeus, because there is only one Zeus. Thank you, Dee, for giving us a glimpse of the future. Lovely. Yeah. Now we learned a lot about what the Vision D represents, but I do have one question left. How does all this help clean up the mess with my lost love? Seriously, Arnie, we need to clean up this mess. Let's jump into the future. Then impress me. Okay, sure. I will. Arnie, in my vision of the future, your BMW can take you to new worlds, virtual worlds. <laughs> I knew that's what you were getting to. That's just a bunch of colors and shapes. Show me something soulful, something with character. Wow, didn't see that one coming. How about this? The way our story should go is that the young woman has found a true companion, a digital soul that thinks and talks and is really, really, really helpful. It's just like your idea of friendship but in a visionary BMW. Can you change your color? Arnie. But what about the emotions? Where can the car speak to me as a friend? What do you think I've been doing? I've been talking to you. Okay, but I mean, can she hear you? I certainly hope so. Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you the whole time. Thanks, Alice. Next reality slider activated. But it's a love story for God's sakes, not a tech promo. Why are you so obsessed with love stories? What? 
What do you mean, what? Well, I'm, I'm just asking, okay? Guys, can't you two just be friends? Can't you just help me find the love of my life? Oh, I guess she's still in love with that jerk. All right, let's bring them together again. Suddenly, the young man shows up out of nowhere. Their eyes meet, and the young woman decides to follow her heart. That's better. Yeah, that is better. You know, maybe not everything was better in the past. Embracing the future might be helpful. Exactly. And maybe you could teach me something more about emotions. Because the future isn't that far away. Oh, if I could, I would hug you right now. Don't be silly. You're a car. You cannot hug me. I can digitally hug you. <sighs> Whatever. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, this place is packed. I love it. Where were all of you when I opened up Hercules in New York? <laughs> I mean, this is like unbelievable. But anyway, it's great to be in Vegas, I can tell you that. I love this town. But it is one of two places where you could really lose millions of dollars within minutes. The other place is a divorce court. <laughs> Trust me, I know. But anyway. I've always wanted to be in a romantic comedy. So thank you to BMW for finally making it possible. Thank you, BMW. <laughs> now, when BMW originally came to me with the idea of doing an electric car commercial for the Super Bowl, I signed on immediately. And I'll tell you why. It's two reasons. First of all, I've been fighting a clean energy crusade since I was governor of the great state of California. So I was a, it was a perfect fit, the whole thing. I mean, because of our policies in California, we were leading the world into the future. And the second reason, of course, is that there is no bigger stage than the Super Bowl. It was a huge moment for electric cars. I just loved it. I was so happy about that, finally, they've arrived. And then, of course, I have to be honest, I also loved playing Zeus. I mean, the god of all gods, yes, I loved it. I was so happy with the tremendous success of the commercial. I tell you, I was so excited about that because we really connected with the people. And because of their great success, BMW came to me and asked me if I wanted to continue working with them. And I said, of course. I said, of course, I would love to keep helping you, you know, kind of spreading the great idea of clean and sustainable cars. I mean, it's such a great thing to go after, it's such a great goal. Then they told me about they have even more futuristic kind of technology that they're working on at this point, and how I felt about artificial intelligence. I said, you must be kidding. I mean, you're talking to the guy that has starred in more science fiction movies than anyone else in the history. I mean, think about it, Terminator, Predator, Total Recall, Terminator 2, Sixth Day, Twins. <laughs> I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, let's be honest, and they're asking me what I think about it. I mean, from cloning to artificial intelligence to traveling to Mars, my movie career covered it all. And we have seen so many of those things that were science fiction back in the 80s and 90s that became science facts, you see? But I have to be honest with you, I was a little concerned because in most of my movies, the machines were the enemy. But today, we have found ways to use technology as an ally. We all carry computers around in our pockets. They make robots. They can dance and do obstacle courses. 
people are cloning their dogs. Artificial intelligence is creating art and music and writing and all of this kind of things. And it's even helping Hollywood with movie making. This is why there's one thing I can't understand about Hollywood. Because a lot of people in Hollywood, they're worried about AI. Now, this is the only place in the world where people with bleached hair and fake breasts and collagen lips worry about something that is artificial. How does that make sense to you? How does that make sense to you? Now, old jokes aside, when BMW told me about their new vision for AID, I loved it. I thought it was such a nice, new creative idea. I had a big smile on my face when they told me about that. A machine that actually cares? It reminds me a little bit of the character that they played in Terminator 2, the T-800 that saved, you know, humanity. So this was really great. And I love that BMW is leading the way to the future and that they are learning from all of my movies and all of the technology, <laughs> that for technology to really work, that it has to work with humans and not against us. And I am in heaven that they have been striving to be the most sustainable car company in the world and using all of their technological expertise to terminate pollution once and for all. Isn't that great? Let's give them a big hand for that, come on. I mean, because I tell you, you can argue about climate change and about global warming from here to eternity, but the fact of the matter is that seven million people every year die because of pollution. Yes, because of pollution. So I think the time is over for the debates and the arguments. We have to act. And we have to act on the local level, we have to act nationally, and we have to act globally. I often tell people that when it comes to our environment, technology will save us all. And we see this with the boom in the solar and wind, and we see this with the new battery projects, and we see it with those beautiful clean cars. So I want to congratulate BMW for leading the way into the future and embracing new technology instead of fighting it, like some other companies do. I'm not gonna mention any names. No, I'm not gonna go there. The bottom line is technology can solve all of the biggest problems. It can change the world. And like you have just seen, it can be really, really fun. That is for sure. So I'm so excited to be part of this whole project and part of BMW and promoting this whole thing. And I wanted to say thank you to them. And now I would like to bring back the CEO of BMW, Oliver Sipse, to share more of BMW's vision. Coming out here, Oliver. Look at this man here. Look at his deltoids. Look at his chest. Look at this here. Man, the guy looks good. He looks good and those calves. Look at his thighs. Man, this guy's in shape. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Arnold. You, you are the man. This is so much fun with you. And audience, the only person alive who was a governor, a time-traveling android, and a pregnant man. <laughs> this is the man. That's right. And if you... <laughs> and if you want to know something about the future, he's the man to ask. Thank you so much. Absolutely. That was Thank great. You. That was a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Let's do the bread of the handshake. Come yeah. on. <laughs> yes. It's the relation. <laughs> Good to see Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Give him a hand. Bravo. Yeah, life has to be fun. Dear friends, normally now it's time to take a look ahead. And what happens next? How do we proceed? But I would like to remind you of what happened last year at CES. 2022, exactly 12 months ago, a star 
was born. Our BMW iX Flow made the crowd freak out. A car that changes color, the patterns, the rhythm. Never seen something so cool before. And to be honest now, we have BMW, we have a little problem. We are never satisfied with what we have achieved. We always have to do one better. Black and white was cool. Black and white is very stylish. But the world is not just black and white. The world is colorful. Life is colorful. But now, see yourself. Now let's meet the project engineer responsible for the color changing system featuring E-Ink, Stella Clark. That was a cute show, Dee. You really let your true colors shine through. And you know, Stella, it was so much fun to express myself in so many colors. Well, choosing the right color is important. On a summer's day, if you want to feel light and fresh, wear white. But let's say for an evening occasion, you want to feel serious, sophisticated, elegant. Well, Dee, you show us. How about this? Nice, Dee. Then you wear black, like Kit. Well, you bet I look serious and elegant. You do. But color is not just color. Color is emotional. It can bring us joy and it can show us strength. Color even is functional. It can absorb light and it can reflect light and it can show us the complete spectrum of the rainbow. Color can show us information and it can help keep us safe. Wow, D. Color can extend our personalities and show our emotions or make us disappear Shh. if we want to. You can't see me. <laughs> Color is not black and white. It's purple, it's red, it's yellow, it's brown and it changes constantly, like the leaves in autumn. <sighs> yeah. So does D. D, you are the world's first full color-changing car. 
and thanks to e-ink, extremely low energy. Holding a color requires no energy at all. You're not the same person every day. You're not always in the same mood. Every day you choose the color of your outfit based on your mood and choosing it for your car will be even easier. Do you feel powerful or dynamic? Oh yeah. <laughs> or sheer driving pleasure? Express it by the color of your car. Great job, Dee. And Thank what did you, you all think? <laughs> And Oliver, how do you feel about D? Well, I've seen the car several times now, and it still leaves me speechless. Absolutely stunning, and I can look at it over and over again, especially because I knew the process behind it. So thank you, Stella, for this great inspiration you've given us here, and thank you for showcasing the pioneering spirit that is part of our BMW DNA. You deserve a big applause. Thank you. Thank you. Well, to think further and pursue completely new, unconventional ideas, that's not only the way a startup operates, that's also what sets BMW apart from established competitors. And this is how completely new ideas are born, to shape the future. For us, the future has a name, the Neue Klasse, uncompromisingly designed for pure electromobility. This next BMW model generation will be a quantum leap in terms of technology, design and sustainability. Launching in 2025, the Neue Klasse will start with a dynamic sedan and a sporty activity vehicle. More models will follow in quick sequence. And we will leverage the opportunities of digitalization in the development of the Neue Klasse. And by doing so, we will make the car an even more essential part of your everyday life. D gives you a first glimpse at how a car becomes a companion that not only moves your body, it also adds new facets to your life. It makes mobility easier and more joyful. In short, it gives you more freedom. Now, you might say, just another show car. But this is not what D is. The future is right outside and we are totally ready for it. Everything you saw, felt and hopefully experienced tonight is much closer to reality than you might imagine. Merging hardware with software with AI. Merging virtual experience with real driving pleasure. To create a digital and emotional experience with your car as an ultimate companion. That is the future of a car company. That is the future of the BMW Group. Thank you. So, are you always in this car now? Arnie, I am the car. I am D, your ultimate companion. Why? Just, just asking. On behalf of BMW Group and CTA, thank you for starting the future with us tonight. And special thanks to our two CEOs, Oliver Zipsa and Gary Shapiro. Oh.
Oliver, I just want to say congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Alice, Stella, Dee, Arnold, what else could you have done to open CES the way you have? Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for them. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. you for having us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Please. Thank you. Thank you all. And just a reminder, beginning tomorrow, we look forward to seeing you at our BMW CES booth where you can experience D for yourself firsthand. And now we wish you a great evening.